Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Mixcraft Quick Tips. Today, we're here to answer one of the big questions you might have when it comes to recording. With so many different types of microphones out there, which one do I use? In this video, we're going to be demonstrating a few different types of microphones on an acoustic guitar and a vocal so you can hear the differences between the tone of the different microphones. Today, we'll be demonstrating a dynamic microphone, a large diaphragm condenser microphone, and a ribbon microphone. Before we listen to the microphones though, let's quickly talk about some of the pros and cons between each different type of microphone. First up, we've got dynamic microphones like this Shure SM58, which is a microphone you might be familiar with as it's a very common choice for live and studio applications. A couple of pros when it comes to dynamic microphones. They're very cheap and affordable. They're incredibly durable, like you could pound a nail into a wall with this thing and it would be fine. They're great for really loud sound sources. They don't require phantom power and they're good all around microphones for just about any application. This means things like drums, vocals, guitars, and just about anything in between. A dynamic microphone like this one is usually a safe bet. When it comes to the cons of dynamic microphones, they tend to be a bit darker than most other microphones, so they're not necessarily the most crispy, detailed, exciting microphones right out of the box. They also sometimes run a bit quiet, so you might need a relatively decent mic preamp in order to get them up to an acceptable level. Also with that, they're not great for recording really quiet, detailed sources, and all around they're just not the most detailed microphones out there, so they're not really that crispy top-end pop sheen that you might expect from something like a condenser microphone. With all that said, based on the affordability and availability, these microphones are really great to get started with and have even been used on some of the top records in the industry. They're just a good all-around choice that everyone should have. Next up, we've got condenser microphones. Now there are small diaphragm condensers and large diaphragm condensers. Today we'll be focusing on a large diaphragm condenser as our example. That would be this guy right here, which is an AKG C214. When it comes to the pros of condenser microphones, they offer a really nice, crisp, detailed sound. We typically associate this with your modern vocals and guitars and things like that. They're good for a lot of different applications like drums, guitars, violins, pianos, vocals, and just about everything in between, much like the dynamic microphones. And they offer a pretty good balance between affordability and performance. You could spend only a couple hundred dollars and get a microphone that sounds really, really nice. Some of the downsides of condenser microphones are that they require phantom power, so you do need an audio interface or other power supply to send phantom power to the microphone in order to even use it. Some of them can be quite expensive. They may sound a little harsh or brittle depending on the sound source and application. They are a bit more delicate. You can't use them for really, really loud sources like you could a dynamic microphone. And on the opposite end of things, if you buy one of the cheaper ones, they typically can be a bit hit or miss. So a condenser microphone does require a little bit of an investment to get something worthwhile. Finally, let's talk ribbon microphones. Here I've got an MXL R144. Some of the pros of ribbon microphones are that they offer a really nice, warm, round vintage tone. They can add a little bit of mojo and vibe to your mix. They're not all that expensive typically. For just a bit more than your average dynamic microphone, you can get a pretty decent ribbon mic. And they're a lot of fun to experiment with. They're great for blending in with other mics just to round out the mix and add a bit of tone and flavor. As for the cons of ribbon microphones, they are very delicate. You have to be careful when you're handling them, storing them, transporting them. You can't use them for very loud sound because it could damage the ribbon inside. They might sound a bit dull and unexciting and they do sometimes require just a bit more work in post in order to get them to sound maybe a bit more modern. So if you're going for a super modern tone, ribbon mics are probably not the way to go. Now with all that out of the way, let's get these plugged in and hear them in action. This is the sound of me speaking into a dynamic microphone, a Shure SM58. My name is Cameron and I like chicken nuggets. This is the sound of me speaking into a large diaphragm condenser microphone, an AKG C214. My name is Cameron, and I like chicken nuggets. This is the sound of me speaking into a ribbon microphone, an MXL R144. My name is Cameron, and I like chicken nuggets.
And that wraps everything up for this Mixcraft quick tip. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.